Hi there, I'm author and freelance writer Melissa May Younger, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, writing a memoir. As you're thinking about writing your memoir, uh, really think about the story that you want to tell, the aspects of your life that are most important to you, why you want to write the story, who you're writing it for, who your audience is, okay? So if you overcame something, then you might want to write to people who are struggling with that thing whether that's addiction, whether that was, you know, overcoming trauma, whether that is um, in their careers, whatever it is, okay, you want to think about, you know, what's going to be most helpful for you to share with them. And that's what you want to choose to put in your memoir. To get started, what I would suggest doing is that you just get all the material that you think that might even be important, okay? Anything, photographs, notes, notebooks, journals, scraps of paper, letters that someone wrote to you that are important in your journey. Um, if you're writing a professional memoir, you want to have your, your CV or your resume. You want to have like a record of, you know, just write a little bit about your experience at every job place. I would say just start like compiling all that information you can always take stuff out later, but you just want to like gather as much as possible at the beginning. Gathering all these things will help trigger memories for you. And then you can decide which ones are most useful to tell the kind of story that you want to tell. Let's talk about different characteristics that make a memoir good. First of all, you want to have the drama in there. You want to make sure that it is going to have its ups and downs. That's going to take its reader on a journey, um, that it, it really comes to life for your reader, that they're drawn into this story. Um, so you want to include like the highs and the lows, because if it's all like flat, that is not going to be an interesting memoir. Like if you're writing about how my life was perfect and still is, that's that's not going to be compelling. <laughs> And, you know, another kind of drama would be like if you're learning something, right? You're going to have negative and positive experiences. So put them both in there is what I'm saying. Um, and then relevance, you want it to feel like your reader can relate to it, even if they haven't had that experience at all. There's different kinds of memoirs. There's like prison memoirs. Um, there's famous people memoirs. Um, there's professional memoirs about someone's professional journey. There's transformational memoirs about like you were this kind of person and then you became that kind of person. Coming of age, you know, like these are the things I learned <laughs> to mature and become an adult. So all of these kinds of memoirs, uh, you want to make sure that whatever it is that your readers are really going to connect in the way that you do that is by including enough about your very human experience. So you don't want it to be too like out there. This is this is the kind of work that has to be very grounded. Include a lot of details, you know, as many details as you can without like not boring ones, right? I have, the, I have this memory of my parents' cat and it was a nice cat, right? That's nice, right? But why are you including that? There's There's gotta be something more. So you need to dig a little bit deeper. You wanna say like, when I was down, the cat was there for me and we developed this bond that went, you know, beyond any other bonding I've had with another animal and all of that kind of stuff, right? Because that's what people, even if people like never bonded with a cat, maybe they bonded with an animal or they bonded with another human being or something, we can all, you know, recognize bonding. You want it to be authentic. You don't want it to come off like you're too perfect or that you have everything figured out. And then you want to have a character arc in there. So if you're writing a memoir about yourself, you are writing about yourself as a character. You can't write about yourself like in your entirety from your entire life. There's no way you could fit all of that in a book, right? So you're writing about a maybe certain parts of yourself and that's a that's a caricature of yourself and then 
you want to leave your readers with something that they're going to remember, you know, make it, make it memorable. So I'll just go through real quickly. There's different types of memoirs. Um, confessional memoirs are very popular. That's when the writer um, confesses something about their wrongdoings and there's personal memoirs, which are the most popular. And I'm going to spend the most time talking about them in this video. And they're based on a particular experience or event, uh, such as if there was child abuse, divorce, an illness, an adventure, um, or if it's if it shows like what you learned from a situation, what you came away with, how you recovered. Um, if you had a unique experience that most other people don't have, like growing up or and there's portrait memoirs that are based on an event or an experience of a person who is not the author. You're talking about like an event, like let's say 9-11. A lot of people are, are writing, you know, about the pandemic and their experiences during that and in isolation. And then there's professional mem memoirs where you can kind of, if you had a unique professional journey, you could share about that. Um, you could share like, you know, the path not taken, what, what if, and um, how you got to where you are, you know? So those, those are gonna be popular um, for like in business, how I, how I became so successful, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's travel memoirs as well. So if you've done a lot of traveling, you could just say what those exp different experiences are like, um, coming of age, spiritual quest memoirs, political memoirs, uh, celebrity memoirs. There's lots of different kinds. Okay, so let's talk about structuring your memoir for a second, okay? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. The first way, you could just be giving chronological events, right? And I would say that you would wanna do that most often if it is a very complicated story that takes place over a long period of time, you don't wanna confuse your readers too much. So you want to probably stick to more of a chronological order or at least be somewhat chronological within each chapter. You, if there's like 10 years of your life that are what you want to talk about the most um, and then you want to say something about your early life and something about your later life, then um, your timeline is going to look different, right? You're going to just have a little bit at the beginning, then a lot in the middle <laughs> and then a little bit at the end. Now, you could also be telling like different kinds of narratives. You know, this is what was going on with me. This is what was going on with that person. And then this is where we kind of like intersected, our stories intersect. You could do all kinds of creative things with it. But I would say that the bottom line is you want to make sure whatever structure you're choosing, that it fits the type of story that you want to tell. And you want to also make sure that it is not going to be too confusing for your reader. You could use the, th the typical three-act structure, and that would mean that in the first act that the you're going to introduce the inciting incident. So this is what kind of gets everything going. Um, show the conflict, show the characters, get draw the reader in. You want to introduce that early on, and then... In act two, you're going to show all of the challenges and obstacles and setbacks to that. And then in act three, um, you want to resolve the story, resolve everything. So that's a pretty simplistic structure, right? Memoirs can be a hard to fit into that structure, however. So you may want to consider other structures if that seems more in line with the story that you want to tell. Um, so for example, you could use a more like collage type of method, which means that you would be presenting different ideas or events to the reader. And like a collage, it's going to be just bits and pieces. It's not going to be this, like, this is what happens first and this and then that, right? And that, I would say for personal memoirs, I think that's a lot more common because your memories don't really like 
work like that, right? Like you're, if you're writing, if you're trying to write it as, as like true to what happened as possible, like your, your memories aren't going to fit this perfect three act structure. It's going to take a lot more work as a writer to fit it into that. So a collage in some ways is easier because you can just kind of pick those little pieces of the story that you want to tell and then just weave them together. And then if you really want to do like these kind of separate narratives, you know, this is what was happening with me and that's what was happening with my mom and that's what was happening with my brother. If, if you want to do that kind of thing, and that's called braiding, um, then you want to just make sure that it's clear whoever's perspective you're in um, or who you're talking about. And then you want to show the different points of connection between those stories. And that's, that is a much more advanced type of memoir if you want to go that direction. When you're thinking about the memoir that you want to write, what you want to do is you want to narrow your focus and decide what type of memoir it is. Do you want to focus mostly on your career, on an experience that happened to you? Or do you want to share like a lot of your perspectives on life? And then why would those type of perspectives be valuable, you know, based on your knowledge and experience? Okay, so you could write that kind of, and then you could interweave stories and ideas there or use stories as um, examples of the points that you're making. This is Eleanor Ro Roosevelt's View Long by Living. This is kind of about her like philosophies on living. And she shares a lot of anecdotes that illustrate the different points that she made. And I'll just show you a table of contents here um, that it's very short. It's actually like 200 pages, especially for a celebrity type memoir. Basically, you know, chapter two, fear, the great enemy. So we know that she's going to be talking about fear as like this enemy that you have to battle or overcome. And she's going to give um, stories from her life to, ex to exemplify that. And then the difficult art of maturity is chapter four. So talking about becoming more mature. So these are like kind of basic life lessons and so someone's going to pick this up because it's Eleanor Roosevelt right if this was Joe Schmo writing you learn by living then it might not sell as well but because it's a famous person right this is about a Buddhist nun who takes a spiritual journey um, becomes a Buddhist nun you know is attracted to that lifestyle and then doesn't find the fulfillment she's looking for there and then becomes a Christian. Um, so there are these spiritual type of memoirs that follow that type of story. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of some popular memoirs right now, different types. So this one is a prison memoir. So he's writing from about his experience in solitary confinement. Uh, for I think it was 24 years it said but it was a long time that he was in solitary confinement um, this guy Albert Woodfox so the unique experience is kind of a survival story and you know how he came out on top of that so this one as you can see there's 657 ratings it, it's rated pretty highly um, so this guy's put probably a lot into his memoir. And then here's one of just someone talking about growing up in Hawaii and talking about the struggles that she had to overcome. Um, there's, you know, drug addiction. Her, her parents were drug addicts and um, then people judging her and that sort of thing. And then, you know, learning how to surf. And so she's just kind of sharing about her experience. This one has a lot of ratings and is very highly rated. So maybe check that one out as an example of a personal memoir. And then this one is about, um, is about child abuse and um, then how she has to testify. So that's a personal memoir as well. 
And so she's got extremely high ratings and lots of them. Her book has become very popular. This is more of a confessional memoir called High Achiever. So you can see, again, lots of ratings, very popular. And so this is about her, you know, going through withdrawal and she's in jail. And um, so going through all of that and then personal growth. And you can assume that she comes out on top if it's selling well. <laughs> because the ones that don't sell well are like, you know, if you... <laughs> If you just have a depressing story where the character, the person never comes out on top, people don't really want to read that. And I'm not trying to be rude, but like everybody likes a happy ending kind of thing is what I'm saying. This one, Educated, has done extremely well. It's a number one bestseller actually in U.S. biographies right now. Um, and so this one is just about this girl who actually has this unique experience where um, her family is isolated from mainstream society in the mountains of Idaho. And then so she doesn't receive an education and her older brothers become violent. One of them gets into college. And so she tries um, to find a new kind of life and, and to pursue education, even though she hasn't been educated. Okay, and so you can see this is by her, and it's going to be about her and her experience. This is also kind of a coming of age one because um, it does talk about her experiences as a child and then kind of coming into her own. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel to see more about writing and more about publishing. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below about the memoir you're thinking of writing um, or if you have any questions for me. So I hope that's helpful for you in writing your memoir and happy writing everybody.